Hi guys, my name is Brian and I'm a civil engineer with the Clark County Regional Flood Control District. Today I'm recording this video to talk about some of the important updates that we made to the hydrologic analysis as part of the 2018 Las Vegas Valley Flood Control Master Plan Update, or MPU. The hydrologic analysis really is the backbone of the MPU because we take into account all available data and information and we develop computer models that can help us predict where potential flooding might occur during a 100-year storm event. And then once we have that information, we're able to mitigate those flooding problems by designing and building flood control facilities like storm drains and channels that can safely collect and convey that water away from people and property. Since a lot of the projects and the drainage studies in Las Vegas rely on the MPU methodology as a basis for their analysis, we wanted to put together this video to talk about those changes and make sure everyone's aware of what we've done and has access to the latest information. So what I'll do is for the next few minutes, I'll share some PowerPoint slides, and then after that, I'll do a little demo and share my screen and show you how to use the electronic data that's been provided. Here on the screen, we are looking at the study area for the Las Vegas Valley MPU. The study area is divided into 11 watersheds, which helps us organize the hydrologic analysis, as well as the implementation of the overall flood control plan. I wanna talk about five of the more significant changes that were made to the hydrology. First, ultimate development boundary. Second, drought ordinance methodology. Third, land use and percent imperviousness. Fourth, soils data. And fifth, curve numbers. So first, let's go over the ultimate development boundary. For planning purposes, the MPU is based on the assumption that all available land in the Las Vegas Valley has been developed. This is helpful because it ensures that flood control facilities we design and build today will still have adequate capacity well into the future as growth and development occurs. During the 2018 MPU, this boundary was reviewed and several modifications were made based on best available information and input from different entities. The 2018 boundary is shown in green and the 2008 boundary is shown in blue for comparison purposes. And the changes are also summarized here on the screen. The important takeaway is just to be aware that some changes have been made. You can review those in more detail if you would like in the report itself. Next, let's go over the drought ordinance methodology. Now to understand this, let me provide a little background about what was done in the 2008 MPU. In that MPU, we came up with a boundary to delineate where existing development had already occurred. We call this the drought ordinance boundary. The reason we did this was because SNWA passed a drought ordinance that limited grass landscaping in any new commercial or residential developments. But these same limitations didn't apply to the areas that were already developed before the drought ordinance went into effect. So this boundary basically allowed us to have different categories of land use inside and outside of the boundary. Inside of the boundary in the developed areas, these top 13 categories shown in the table were used, and these assume a higher percentage of grass. Outside of the boundary, the drought ordinance requirements apply, and so those categories on the bottom were used, and these use a lower percentage of grass coverage and more desert landscaping. So now, fast forwarding to the current 2018 MPU, this drought ordinance boundary assumption was revisited to see if it was still needed or applicable. When we looked into this, we discovered that many parcels across the valley have been participating in SNWA's turf conversion program and converting grass to desert landscaping and then getting a rebate from SNWA. In the image on the screen, the parcels that participated in the program are shown in green. As you can see, many properties all across the valley have participated in the program and replaced their grass with desert landscaping. Because of this, there really isn't a need anymore to distinguish between the difference in grass coverage in the existing and undeveloped areas, since desert landscaping is basically prevalent all throughout the valley. So based on this information, it was clear that the drought ordinance boundary has basically become obsolete. Back to our table, we eliminated the drought ordinance boundary and the separate land use categories for existing and undeveloped areas. Instead, we just use these drought ordinance assumptions from the bottom of the table everywhere. Here is the final simplified version of the land use table. Eliminating the drought ordinance boundary was a significant change in the hydrologic analysis in the 2018 MPU. Next, let's talk about land use and percent imperviousness. 
Land use data for the 2018 MPU is a crucial component of the overall plan because it directly impacts the amount of runoff that will occur for a given area. The MPU categories are shown on the screen. Each category is composed of three main components. Percent impervious area, open landscaping in good condition or grass, and desert shrub in fair condition or desert landscaping. The distributions of impervious area, grass, and desert landscaping were reviewed during the MPU based on input from the local entities, aerial photography, feedback from SNWA, and the National Land Cover Database, which provides satellite imagery of impervious areas. As part of this effort, we spent a lot of time verifying the impervious areas for the different residential categories. This was done manually using aerial photography and zoning information. This is an example shown on the screen where we zoom into a residential area and then we draw polygons around the paved or impervious areas like rooftops and driveways. And then we can use those polygons to calculate the average percent impervious area for different residential land use categories. Based on these efforts, minor adjustments were made to the percent impervious numbers for five of the categories. Also, as mentioned previously, the distribution of grass and desert landscaping was updated for several of the categories. And finally, the desert shrub condition was changed to be desert shrub in fair condition instead of in poor condition like was used in previous MPUs. All of these different changes were incorporated into our final land use table for the 2018 MPU. I know that's a lot to cover in a couple minutes, so feel free to check out the MPU report for more details and supporting information. Next, let's go over soils data. The latest soil survey data from NRCS was used in the 2018 MPU. As shown on the screen, there are five different areas or soil surveys that were downloaded, formatted, and combined into one comprehensive layer in GIS. This data represents the latest and best available information in the Las Vegas Valley. If I zoom in, I can show you a little more detail. You can see in GIS that each soil map unit area is delineated with a polygon and has a corresponding map unit number. That's the three-digit code, so for example, 615 is the map unit number for this particular polygon in the middle of the screen. Since we combined five soil data sets into a single layer, we actually modified the map unit symbols to avoid having any duplicates in the different survey areas. So, for example, here in the central watershed, this data comes from source number one, and so instead of 615, we add a 1 in front of the map unit number and it becomes 1615. A similar process was followed to modify the map unit numbers for sources 2, 3, 4, and 5 as well. This soils data is a nice complete data set that we provide electronically, and it can be used by the engineering community to do their analysis and modeling. It's probably worth mentioning that we are aware that the updated soils data and changes in the hydrologic soil groups can be significant compared to the previous soils data. However, the soils data that was used in previous MPUs is from the 1980s and is considered outdated. That data is no longer published and it can't be reproduced and it's not based on the latest sampling and testing methods in the field. So this new data will be used going forward at the district. So the last thing we'll talk about are the curve numbers. Here on the screen, I am showing the curve number matrix developed during the 2018 MPU. Each of the land use categories is assigned a curve number corresponding with hydrologic soil groups A, B, C, and D, and also rock outcrop. So we can use this matrix for any given area in the MPU to determine the corresponding curve number. If we know the land use in that area, and we know the soil type, we can match those up in the table and determine the curve number that should be used in the hydrologic analysis and calculations. One of the things that we did during the 2018 MPU was to compare the updated curve numbers with the curve numbers that were previously computed during the 2008 MPU. And this was helpful because curve numbers are a sensitive parameter in the hydrologic models. And all of these changes we've been talking about, like changes in land use or percent imperviousness or soils data, all of that has an impact on the final curve numbers. So we wanted to get a feel for how those have changed. That comparison is what's shown here on the screen. The blue colors represent areas that generally saw a decrease in curve numbers, and the orange colors represent areas that generally saw an increase in curve numbers. 
You can see from the comparison that the curve number changes vary across the valley and are not isolated to one location or watershed. In general, though, the undeveloped areas surrounding the valley decreased in curve number, and that was primarily driven by the updated soils data. In comparison, the developed areas in the central portion of the study area, and especially along the Las Vegas wash, saw an increase in curve number. And again, that was due to the updated soils data, but also the land use revisions that were made. To summarize, we have talked about five significant changes that were made during the 2018 MPU as shown on the screen. That included revisions to the ultimate development boundary, elimination of the drought ordinance boundary, updates to the land use and soils data which impacted the curve numbers. Also, if you want more detailed information, remember that everything I've discussed in this video is documented in detail in the final 2018 MPU report. Section 2.3 specifically in that report talks about all of the hydrologic analysis and methodology. So I recommend you read that report if you've not done so already. Also, if you don't have the report, you can get it from our website at www.regionalflood.org. All right, so now that I've talked through those changes that we made to the hydrology and I've been through the slides, I want to just take the last couple minutes and go through the electronic data and show you how to use some of that. So I'm sharing my screen, and basically this is what it would look like if you open the flash drive that comes with the MPU or if you downloaded the data from our website. So it's organized by subfolders, and as it relates to hydrology, the important folder is called Hydrologic Analysis Data. So we go into that folder, and you'll see the top subfolder is called HEC1 Models. And this is where we provide all of the HEC1 models that were developed during the MPU, and they're organized by watershed. So for example, if I come into the central watershed, you'll see some subfolders on the top, series A, B, and C. Those are different storm centering models that are provided. Those are the input and output files. We also have some Excel spreadsheets in here that help you input data and also read the results out of the models at the end. So those could be helpful if you're um, changing or adapting those base models. And we also provide a README file in here. If you open that up, you'll find additional data and information about all of the models. So that can be a helpful, referen uh, helpful reference as well. So that's the HEC-1 models. If we come out, in addition to the models, we also provide um, a subfolder called Hydrologic Parameters. If we go in here, you'll see we have a routing subfolder where we provide a spreadsheet with all of the routing flood routing calculations. There's a lag time folder with the lag time calculations. And the one that I want to highlight is the top folder called curve number. In here, if I open up this curve number matrix, this is the matrix we were just looking at. It has all of the land use categories, um, the curve numbers for A, B, C, D type land uses. It also has the soil map unit numbers. So this matrix is here. Um, but what's important is the second tab down here called CN Matrix Support. This is kind of um, the behind the scenes look at the matrix, but it has additional information on how that matrix was developed. So you'll see all of our land use categories here, um, the percentage of impervious area, open space area, and the A, B, C, and D curve numbers. And what's important here is that this is all linked together. So if you wanted to come in and either create a custom land use category or modify what we have, you can actually just come right in here and instead of 20, 80 percent split, maybe it's 40, 60. And as you change that, you'll notice that these curve numbers actually get updated and those are linked back to the original matrix. So any changes you make on that other tab are going to be reflected here in the matrix. So that can be handy if you're updating a study or you need to customize some of the land use categories to fit better with your study area. So be aware, that's here, that's electronic, um, very adaptable and flexible, although we think most of the time the categories that are provided will be sufficient for most of the areas in the Las Vegas Valley. So that's a few things on the folders. The last thing I'll mention is there's also a folder called GIS Data and Documentation, and in that folder we provide a lot of the GIS data that goes along with the hydrologic analysis. So that's where you'll find GIS data for the soils, for the land use, um, the sub-basins, flow arrows, other things like that. And so that's also very helpful when it comes to hydrology. But we have a separate video talking about our GIS data, so I won't get into all those details now. All right, well that concludes what we wanted to talk about in this video. Hopefully that was helpful and gave you a better understanding of some of the changes we made to the hydrology. If you still have questions, feel free to email myself 
or Andrew Trelease or any of our engineering team here at the Flood Control District and we'd be happy to help you out. Also, the last thing I'll mention is that we do have a couple other videos that we're putting out that talk about different aspects of the MPU. So check those out if you haven't already. Other than that, thanks for watching.